Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. Uh, this is our first video for lecture 33, uh, and this is going to be based upon our section 5.3, Rational Equations and, in and Inequalities. Um, we've been following a fairly standard pattern since, uh, since chapter 2, basically, of this series, where we introduce a new function family. We then talk about things about that function like domain, range, the graph of the function, how do you solve equations, how do you solve inequalities, how do you work with story problems. That, and we don't necessarily always go into that order. And we also will explore certain exploratory things that also might be related to that. Uh, and so that's where we are right now. We've, we've talked about rational functions. We've spent a good amount of time discussing the graphs of rational functions. In this lecture, I want to talk about how we solve rational equations and rational inequalities. And we saw a little bit of that while we were graphing them. Sometimes we had to decide whether a graph crossed its uh, horizontal asymptote or something like that. But the basic idea one has when you solve a rational equation, well, it is the following. It's called clearing the denominator. Well, because you have these fractions that show up inside of your function, right? And so these are going to be fractions which the denominators themselves might have variables in them. That's what a rational function is all about. And so the best way to get rid of, uh, I should say, to solve this equation is to get rid of the denominators as much as possible. Because in order to add things together and combine like terms, we'd have to have a common denominator in the first place. But it turns out if we're going to go through the effort of finding a common denominator, we actually are in a position where we can just get rid of the denominators entirely. And so we can turn a rational, this rational equation into a polynomial equation. And so to do that, we have to identify the denominators in the equation right here. So we look at this. We have an x minus 2, we have an x minus 1, and we have an x minus 1 times x minus 2. So the first thing to do here is we have to identify the least common denominator. That is, what is the least common multiple of all of the denominators present? And I like to think of finding the LCD much like as ordering a pizza for a bunch of college students and their roommates, right, in the dorm. Because, you know, college students are notorious for not having lots of money, right? We, we you know, we eat uh, mac and cheese and ramen, top ramen, all these cheap foods all the time. So once in a while, when you want to go luxurious, we're going to get a pizza. But, you know, amongst the three roommates here, we really only have enough money for one large pizza. So we got to put all the toppings on it that we want. So our first roommate here, uh, he's like, hey, I want X minus two on my pizza. That is, I, I want like, I want pepperoni on my pizza. And so that's what's good. That's the first request. We're going to put X minus two on this pizza. Now, the second roommate, he's like, hey, you know, I want olives on my pizza, um, in which case then we're, uh, or, or really, it's like, oh, I want X minus one on my pizza. So the second fraction is going to request X minus one on the pizza. Now, when the third, uh, when the third roommate hears this, it's, this roommate's like, hey, you know, I want, that, that sounds like a great idea. I want olives and pepperoni on my pizza. Um, I want both of those things. So in terms of the pizza request, we're not going to order double pepperoni or double olives. Um, because this, this fraction right here likes the order as it is. It doesn't need any more. Um, and so if a factor shows up twice in these denominators, like you have this x minus 2 in the front and this x minus 2 in the back, we're not going to order it twice. We're just going to get a pepperoni olive pizza right here. And so this is going to be our least common denominator, x minus 2 times x minus 1. There is no benefit for us whatsoever to multiply that out, keep it factored. What we're going to do instead is we are going to multiply the left-hand side and the right-hand side by this least common denominator. So we multiply the left by x minus 2 and x minus 1, and we do it on the right as well. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. So we have to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Now on the left-hand side, we're going to end up with a 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 1 all over x minus 2. On the right-hand side, we're going to distribute this because we do have a plus after all. If you have a sum of two things and you're multiplying, you can distribute that multiplication through the sum. So we're going to distribute onto both of the fractions there. We're going to get an x minus 2 times an x minus 1. This sits above x minus 1. And then we have a 7x minus 2 times x minus 1 sitting above an x minus 1 times x minus 2. All right, so we chose our least common denominator so that all of the denominators should cancel out. If you look at the left-hand side, we have an x minus 2 on top, and we have an x minus 2 that 
on the bottom that cancels out, in which case these common divisors will cancel across the fraction bar, and we end up with 3 times x minus 1. Then moving to the right-hand side, you look at the first fraction. There's an x minus 1 on top, a factor of x minus 1, that cancels with the factor of x minus 1 on the denominator. And so that fraction will simplify just to be x minus 2. And then finally, if you look at the last fraction, there's a factor of x minus 2 that cancels with the top, and there's a x minus 1 that cancels with the bottom. And in which case, you leave just a 7. And so after all this multiplication, we end up with just a polynomial equation. That's honestly just a linear polynomial. Uh, if we distribute the 3, uh, we end up with 3x minus 3 equals x minus 2 plus 7. You could add the 7 and the negative 2 together to get x plus 5. Uh, combining like terms, let's subtract x from both sides. Let's add 3 to both sides. So we end up with a 2x on the left, 3x minus 1, and then on the right we have 5 plus 3, which is an 8, and so then my next inclination is divide by 2 on the left and right hand side, and this would then suggest that our solution should be x equals 4. Uh, so thus solving this equation right here. Now, one should always be cautious when you're working with a rational function, because unlike some function families we've seen in the past, rational functions do have restricted domains. And what is possible is that when you go about solving this equation, x equals 4, you might discover, I mean, there, there could be multiple solutions. In this case, there's just one. You, it could be that the number you found, x minus 4, could be outside the domain of the original problem. Thinking about the rational functions in play, you look at the first rational function, 3 over x minus 2. This thing is undefined when x equals 2. So 2 cannot be an answer no matter what we want because that would require division by 0. We can't do that. If you look at the second fraction, it would be undefined when x equals 1. So it's the domain of that rational expression. And then the third one is actually combined. It's neither defined at 1 nor at 2. And now the good news is uh, x equals 4 is neither 1 nor 2. It's inside the domain. So that does turn out to be the solution to our rational uh, equation in the situation. Let's look at another example. Let's take this time the situation 3x over x minus 1 plus 2 equals 3 over x minus 1. So I can already see right here as I look at the domains of these things, of these rational functions, that whatever happens, x cannot equal 1. That, that's not an acceptable solution no matter what no matter what happens. Uh, now, you know, likely chance I'll get different numbers like we saw in the last example, but just so you're aware, the, the solution cannot be x equals 1. Now, we want to clear the denominators here, just like the other one. When you have a rational function, a rational equation, you always want to clear the denominators. Now, in this example, the only denominator present is an x minus 1. It is repeated. And so remember, remember a little pizza uh, story right here. The first fraction's like, Oh, I want to have x minus 1 on my pizza. Uh, the second fraction, the 2, you can think of it as 2 over 1, but I'll actually write it without, without a fraction bar there. 2 is kind of like, eh, I'm not hungry. I'm not going to eat anything. All right. And so then the last one's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want x minus 1 on my pizza too. So the fact that they're both asking for x minus 1 doesn't mean we get double pepperoni. Um, it just means we'll get a pepperoni pizza. So we're going to times the left-hand side and the right-hand side by x minus 1. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Make sure you do the same thing to both sides of the equation so equality is pres preserved. We do have to distribute on the left-hand side because we have the plus. And what's going to happen is when you take the x minus 1 times the first fraction, it'll cancel the x minus 1 in the denominator. It'll give us just a 3x. On the second one, the 2, you'll just get 2 times x minus 1. We'll have to distribute that out in a moment. And then for the, the fraction on the right-hand side, the x minus 1s will cancel, leaving just a 3, like so. So again, we have a linear equation. Start combining like terms. I'm going to first distribute the 2 there. So we get 3x plus 2x minus 2 equals 3. We can combine together the x's. So 3x plus 2x is a 5x. Uh, negative 2 plus 3. So I want to move the 2 to the other side. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Do the inverse operation there. Um, we're going to end up with 5x is equal to 5. And so then the final thing to do would be divide both sides by 5, and we end up with x equals 1. All right, this, this feels like my spider sense is tingling right now. x equals 1, can that be the solution? Wait a second. If we go back and check in the original equation, which it's all messy right now. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. 
right? Remember the original equation, the, the equation that has not been defiled by the filthy hands of man, right? X equals one was the only number forbidden to be a solution, right? Ne one is outside the domain of this problem. So as much as we feel happy we solve this equation, turns out X equals one cannot solve this equation. But this is what we see here. The only number that could solve the equation was one, but one is also the only number not allowed to solve it. So we get this contradiction. We have to throw out X equals one as a solution. And as there's no other solutions left, we actually would conclude on this equation, there is no solution. We have this inconsistent equation, no solution. Uh, the solution set is empty. So that's a possibility. You might not get a solution to your problem. You do have to make sure you check the domain. So let's look at a third example of solving a rational equation. So we want to solve the equation 9 plus 3 over x minus 2 over x squared equals 0. And I've already commented here that zero, x, x cannot equal 0 because that would make the denominators in play go to 0. Well, so since we have this rational function, the numerators are denominators this time is just x and x squared. Let's look for the LCD here. The LCD, well, if you ask all of your roommates, the first roommate's like, eh, I don't want a pizza. The second roommate's like, oh, I want a pepperoni pizza. And then the third roommate is like, I want a double pepperoni pizza. Notice how you have an x squared there. This is a repeated factor. Um, and so it's like, I really like pepperoni. Let's get double pepperoni. And so the first one's like, yeah, sure. Let's get double pepperoni. I'm good with that. So the least common denominator is going to be x squared. It's not going to be x squared times x. It would just be x squared. Because you'll notice that x squared does divide x squared because it's 1 times x squared. And x also divides x squared because it's x times x. So the least common denominator is going to be x squared. And we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x squared. Now, if you did sort of erroneously think the least common denominator was an x cubed, you could multiply both sides of the equation by x cubed. Um, that would be acceptable. And you would clear the denominators doing that. But the problem is, when you multiply by x cubed, you're going to end up with a cubic polynomial, which is one degree higher than we want. We actually can get away with, an x, with a quadratic polynomial. And so the thing is, when you clear the denominators for a rational equation, it turns into a polynomial equation. And we don't want the degree being any bigger than it has to be. The bigger the degree, the harder it is to solve. And therefore, we're best using the least common denominator. So we get an x squared here because x squared was a repeated. It's a repeated root in the denominator there. So multiply both sides of the equation by x squared. Um, so we do that on the left, we do that on the right. If you distribute the x squared, you're going to get 9x squared. Uh, you're going to get a, I'll actually show the details of this one, 3x squared over x. And then you're going to have negative 2x squared over x squared. On the right-hand side, anything times 0 is just 0, so that's easy enough. Uh, returning to the left-hand side, um, you have x squares that cancel there, so you just get the constant negative 2. And then for the middle term, x will go into x squared just once, leaving you just an x. So as we clear the fractions, we're going to end in end with a 9x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. So this is what I was saying earlier. We ended up with a rational, uh, not a rational, well, we, we cleared the denominators of a rational equation. We end up with this quadratic uh, polynomial here, in which case we need to try to factor it. So we could think of, let's see, factors of 9 times negative 2. Uh, that would be 18, negative 18. We need factors of negative 18 that we could add up to be 3. Uh, positive 3, I could take 6 and negative 3. 6 times negative 3 is still negative 18, but their sum would be 3. So with this, I'm going to break it out into factoring by groups. So we're going to get 9x squared plus 6x. That'll be my first group. And then we're going to get negative 3x minus 2 equals 0. From the first group, we can take out a 3x. That leaves behind 3x plus 2. From the second group, I can just take out a negative 1. That leaves behind 3x plus 2 which is great. You'll notice the term, the term, the binomial in the parentheses is identical. Uh, so I like to think of like the twins from Harry Potter. We're identical. Uh, you factor them out. Uh, that leaves behind a 3x minus 1 and a 3x plus 2 equals 0. And so setting each of those factors equal to 0 and solving them, we see that x should be 1 third or negative 2 thirds. So we do get these fractional solutions here. Um, remember, the only forbidden value was x equals 0. Um, x could not equal 0 as a solution. 
um, we found numbers other than that. So we can keep both of our solutions of one third and negative two thirds. And so these few examples here hopefully can show us how one can solve uh, a rational equation. The strategy I think is fairly simple. Whenever you have rational equations, find the LCD and multiply both sides by this least common denominator to, to clear out the denominators. Then it turns into a polynomial equation and we'll solve it like we did in the previous unit.